Cassius and Helder. I'm quite fortunate enough to be joined by none other than Belfast Tommy McCarthy. How are you, Tommy? You all right, mate? All good, all good. I've got to say, you're getting bigger and bigger every time I see you, lad. That's it. We've been eating all my dinners and, you know, it's adding to my height and strength. <laughs> Irish boxing's buzzing at the moment. Talk to me about the Belfast scene in general. How, how's everything sort of progressing since we last spoke? You know, um, as you know, the Box Nation shows in Belfast are flying, with more pros coming through. Um, before it's all been amateur here in Belfast, it's all been like built around the, the boxing's all been built around the amateur scene. But now people's going professional, and with the high profile amateurs turning over, it's making the youngsters go pro too. So you know, it's buzzing at the minute. You mentioned high profile amateurs turning over. They don't come much more high profile than the young man we've got fighting this weekend, Michael Condon. Your friend, someone you spent many, many, many nights with and many times with on the road. Talk to me a little bit about Michael Conlon as a person. You know, Michael Conlon uh, is my very dear friend. We've known each other from over since over a decade. So me and him know each other inside out. We've been all around the world with each other, and he's just a great guy, a real genuine guy, um, a very intense trainer, and. Um, an intense person, like anything he's doing, he does 100%. So he's just a great friend to have, practically 100%. And I'm looking forward to this New York show, his debut. It's going to be brilliant. For well, the Box Nation viewers that haven't been fortunate enough to watch Michael yet, haven't seen him in the WSB or the Olympics, what can the Box Nation viewers expect to see from him? You know, he's just an all round boxer, the, the universal boxer. He can box, he can fit, Southpaw Orthodox, big, big heart, good chin. And, you know, he's just. Every every boxer you need to take as a boxer, he takes it. Do you think he could be a potential future world star? Someone who who sort of transcends the sport a little bit into the mainstream? Yeah, 100%. I feel like he's already kind of become a household name before even his debut. If you look at this um, New York show and St. Patrick's Day, I think it's almost a seller. The, the whole city of Belfast, it seems like they're all traveling. So, you know, definitely, if this is only his debut, when it, by the time he makes world level and wins a world title, he's just going to be a global superstar. I've heard an interesting rumour about yourself. Now, if you don't want to answer this, you don't have to. It's entirely up to you. I heard that you once you once had a sparring session with a high-profile trainer. Um, is there anything you can tell me about, about that conversation? Yeah, um, when was it? it was, I was 16, and um, it was Shane McGuigan, he was 18, and he came to... He started boxing and he came to Dublin. We were down training. And um, so they put me in the spar room, me and another guy. So what happened was he came out and um, first round. And I just caught him, bang, left hook. Boom, out on his feet. And uh, Tony David, who was monitoring the spar, he says, right, that's enough, son. I said, you okay? Stand back to the corner, me and the other guy sparred. And then his dad sent him back out for a second round. And went, no, no, he's finished. Said, no, he's all right, stand out. So my trainer at the time, Patsy McAllister, says, you know what, open them up here, Tommy, show them what they're about. So I went out, opened them up like a tennis sweet corn, and Tony David just said, all right, that'll do, that'll do again. So that was years ago, and then after that spar, we kind of had like a mutual respect, you know, because I wasn't going to like brag about it. Like a, I wasn't getting any Bernie points because he was a novice boxer. I was an established youth boxer. So we always talked, and... I always thought he, him and, uh, and Barry were nice people, and then we just had a good wee relationship. And then when I was 22 in 2013, the McGregor's came and offered me a contract, but uh, that just the time just wasn't right, so I didn't say I wanted to stay amateur. But then since then, I just Shane, the people tell me he's been running me down, running me down. I was going, why we do that? Me and him's always been, you know, like been friendly, kind of. So I never believed it, and then when David Hay made his comeback, Shane rang me, and he says, uh, could you come and spar with David? And I says, look, I'm fighting on the weekend, so I, I can't, but I would love to. David Hay, is, well, he was my favorite boxer growing up. And he says, right, no problem, um, we'll get to in the new year, and um, good luck with your fight. So I says, yeah, people's been lying to me, because me and Shane spoke, and it was friendly again. So obviously people was lying about you know, all the backstabbing and that, and running me down. But then... Now that I've been part of this Bailu camp, I've seen in all the interviews, Shane running me down now and the thing, saying the, the sparring partners aren't at the scratch. I uh, sparring Tommy McCarthy, a guy who lost for a British title. Uh, we've got world-class sparring and 
and he doesn't. I was going to, to, he doesn't need to talk about the sparring partners. He doesn't need to run me down again in the public forum, you know. So it's just it's disappointing for him, and or disappointing for me that he would he would do this. You no, know, like talk talk bad about me for no reason, and he hadn't done himself any favors anyway. You know, he, he let um he let David Hay fall all around the ring, and you know there's no way. David would ever quit because he's he's a man of pride, and and she inside and watched him fall for five or six rounds, and then let him beat the count, and then throw the towel in after he beat the count, and then went and punched somebody on the way to the ring. So that guy needs to give his head a shake. Let's talk a little bit about Matty Askin. I mean, it was quite a disappointing night for yourself. I know how much it would have meant to you to to win that fight and get that moment. Talk to me. How do you assess that? That looking back at it, you know. Looking back now, it was a blessing in disguise because I needed a wake-up call. I needed um, to tighten up my training and, and, you know, I was moving too fast uh, and, you know, like I thought I was ready and, you know, that was a wake-up call to say, look, you, you still need to do a bit of learning. This is a pro game. You, I was a good amateur, but you have to start again as a pro. So, you know, it was a, it was a horrible night for me. Everything went wrong, but all the stuff that you want to get out of the way as a professional, all happened in one night. It was my first time doing 12 rounds, first time ever being on the deck, and my first loss. So I've got all that out of the way, and I'm ready to push on. So, you know, the, the dream hasn't changed. I'm still going to be world champion, but that was just a baptism of fire that I had to go through. Is there any truth in the rumour that you could potentially face Craig Kennedy in a big fight in the next coming, coming months? Well, you know, there's been talk of it because Askins is injured. So naturally, I would be the next in line. So, you know, I don't know um, how close it is to happening, but, you know, I've got my fingers crossed because that's what, that's, what, that's the fate I want. I want the British title so I can move on. So just have to hold on to hope. We look forward to hearing some imminent news. I know New York's absolutely buzzing at the moment, and I do appreciate you giving Cassie's yeah. notice some of your time. No problem. Look, I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing you guys over there as well. And I'm looking forward to Mick putting on a great show and introduce himself to the American public because we already know here how, how great he is. So it's time for everybody else to know. Tommy McCarthy, thank you very much for the Cassie Nelda Show. Thanks for having me.